we shall prove that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and as he actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the power of laying in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men by whereby men can and must be saved, save in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. Today's class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. Our scripture lesson for the day is 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, which will be read by Dr. Deborah Williams. May we now have our prayer. From the Teacher Schofield Bible with the true name of the post. This is 1 Corinthians, 5th chapter. It is reported commonly that there is fornic fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that has so done this deed. In the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, to deliver such an one 
unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Savior, Yahshua. Your glory in is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore, therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even the Messiah, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such and one no know not to eat. For what I for what have I do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, Yahweh judges. Therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That was 1 Corinthians 5th chapter. Just have a few announcements before we call our first speaker. Should we keep the Passover? Our first speaker this afternoon is Dr. Baron Taylor. is our Passover. So, with that said, let me, now first of all, in the school, it is a school, not a church, we teach by a pattern, a threefold pattern. And now that threefold pattern, <clears throat> that's been in the Bible for, you know, before the school was ever thought of, before any of us were ever thought of. And people, you know, uh, throughout the ages of people have read this um, Bible, you know, how, you know, how many years, and the pattern has been in the Bible, but the, uh, our religious, uh, so-called religious leaders and teachers have not referred to this pattern. And um, basically, basically, we've been kept in the dark, you know, as far as how, you no, know, actually, yeah, we, including them, have been kept in the dark about this pattern and how important it is. Um, we 
with this school being established by a divine vision and revelation given to Dr. Henry, Henry Clifford Kinley, uh, that's, he, he received in that vision the uh, pattern also and the workings of it and was shown what it meant uh, just as Moses did and, you know, at Mount Sinai, 1490 BY, and also John on the Isle of Patmos. And that, that's the basic foundation for this school. And then, it, it, we, of course, now we have to have a revelation of what that pattern means. If you could get for me those scriptures first um, in Exodus. Standard scriptures, Exodus what is it, 25, 8, 9, and one, I want to uh, get the one, first Chronicles 28, 19, I believe it is, where, where uh, that pattern is given from, passed on from David to Solomon to build a kingdom, to build, or to build, a, yeah, to build his uh, temple there, and then Hebrews 8 and 5, let's get that um, so that we can see just how important this pattern was. Now, um, I'll pause and let you get those scriptures first. I do have uh, Exodus 25, 8, 9, and 40. This is 25, this is Exodus 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I shall According to all that I showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Fortieth verse, and look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown to thee in the mount. Okay, so that pattern is something uh, important. And it was shown to Moses. Uh, is, is, well, we don't really go ahead with the uh, next scripture. That is going to be threefold. This is uh, First Chronicles 28, 19. All this said David, Yahweh made me understand in writing by his hand upon me even all the works of this pattern. Okay, so this pattern that we're talking about uh, given to Moses and uh, this is going to be a threefold court roundabout holy place and most holy place. And it's going to court roundabout and holy place separated by the first veil. Holy place, the most holy place will be separated by the second veil. Um, you have three, uh, there were seven steps to this pattern. We had the, uh, the gate, the uh, brazen labor uh, for the uh, altar sin sacrifice, the brazen labor being the third. Uh, fourth would be this uh, door for this entrance into the holy place. The fifth would be the whole holy place. The sixth would be the second step of the veil uh, that separates the most holy place from the holy place. Again, this whole, this seventh step would be this whole um, compartment here, the most holy place. Um, now, we're going to find out through uh, divine vision, which is our body is threefold also. This is why. Uh, Say that we're made in the likeness, the image of our Creator. As we said, this this Moses was told to make this tabernacle, and then he he also sees his Creator transform, or so-called God transform into a uh, into into this pattern. See, Elohim is the pattern. He, uh, get, get also Hebrews eight and five. This is Hebrews 8 and 5, who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. In the mount, now when Moses goes up there, he sees Elohim, or who was erroneously referred to as God. <clears throat> and he, show, he shows himself to have hands and feet, and uh, he's 
spoke down the law to Moses. Uh, he, we talked about the three, the three compartments. We got the seven steps, and then also we have the nine vessels here in this tabernacle. Same tabernacle. We got this uh, brazen labor, or uh, I can say it, the, the uh, altar of incense, sin sacrifice, the brazen labor, and the holy cup of anointing oil. Three vessels down here in this court round about. In the, in the holy place, we've got the golden candlestick, 12 tables, uh, the uh, 12, uh, the table of shebread, 12 loaves, and we have the uh, altar of incense, the four horns, and the four ingredients in this, in this compartment. So that's three uh, <coughs> vessels here. And then also, because we have a three-in-one configuration, with this Ark of the Covenant and the two archangels, uh, three in one configuration. These vessels and the two compartments being gold, and then the uh, court around the belt <coughs> being brass. Now, we said that, uh, I mean, Moses, there was, there was nothing taken up, but Moses didn't take anything up to the mountain, okay? Nothing to eat, no, nothing to build anything with, it doesn't say, <laughs> That he did build it. See, he said he saw this pattern, so without knowing it had appeared to him. Now, that's how we know that man is made in his likeness and image of his creator. That's the only way we know that. With our uh, nine systems in, in, in our body, uh, our body being threefold also being head cavity, chest cavity, and abdominal cavity. Abdominal and chest separated by the, uh, our first veil, which will be correlated with the diaphragm, and the chest <coughs> and the head cavity separated by the neck region. <coughs> you see? And then also, this, you can really be polytech polytechnical with this pattern here, but well, for instance, with these two archangels here, Michael and Gabriel, will be, and this Yahweh. You better get that Yahweh uh, dwelling in the cloud or appearing in the cloud of the mercy. That, that because you got this uh, all seeing eye to pick it up here. In this cloud, and you got this, these two arch, archangels, and you got this. Ark of the Covenant. Well, in your brain you have, or in your uh, head, cranial region, this most holy place, you've got this, your brain, which is like into a cloud. The two halves, order and sensory, they, uh, they carry out and receive messages. That's, uh, that's uh, compared to Gabriel and Michael. Michael uh, <laughs> carrying out you know, uh, action. Gabriel bringing messages as he did to uh, Virgin Mary and, and other places in the Bible there. And you got your pituitary gland, which would be a law with seven arms on the one side and on the other. It's just like this, this is like this law here in this most holy place, which, which will have uh, seven on the one side and the uh, law that was spoken of in this with this Ark of the So now what did I ask for? This is Leviticus 16 and 2. And Yahweh spake on, uh, said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Okay, so we didn't make anything up, and, uh, and we won't make anything up. Uh, you see, this altar of incense here with four ingredients on it. See, only known by the high priest. You see, and it's going to correlate to your, uh, the lungs. You see, they, they would light this altar of incense, and it would uh, it would get rid of the stench here from these these sacrifices. Here. It will be a sweet smell of savor to Yahweh. If it's not the Yahweh. You know, you're going to get that same sweet smell of savor with the four ingredients made of made up that make up air: carbon, carbon. Dioxide, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. You see, and it's going to be definitely, it's going to be a sweet smelling savor onto your brain. 
we have to have it before we know what happens when that oxygen is cut off. Now look, <coughs> of course you got this seven branch golden camera seat, which uh, lit up this holy place here, this tabernacle. And this tabernacle was never supposed to go dark. Uh, well, you got your seven branch A order in your holy place also. Of course, you know, there's life in the blood, see, it's pumping blood. You know, through these, uh, through these uh, seven, this seven branch. But if this thing ever, is ever cut off or goes out, again, we got a lot of trouble ahead. You see, um, look down here into the court roundabout where they would burn the sacrifices. Four points of blood here, and the high priest would put the uh, uh, the uh, sacrifice on on here. It's all been burning. Well, look, you got four concentrations of four points of blood in your court roundabout. The way your sacrifice, they had to, they had to sacrifice these uh, animals, you know, for the sins of the people uh, and the priests. But look, they, they had to do this or be killed, or Yahweh would uh, do do away with them. So. In order to have life, you had to have this death principle here. When you have to have the same thing, you got to eat something. You have to eat something. It has to be killed here. And, uh, it has to be uh, churned and given the acid treatment. And it has to assimilate to your body in order for you to have life. If you don't do this, you're going to starve. Okay, so now we, that's briefly on that threefold on this. You see, you see man here? Depicted in a skeletal form, uh, you had twelve. You got twelve limbs carrying around this tabernacle. This tabernacle here. You see. So you got twelve limbs. The hand, lower arm, upper arm, which is three, six, and then you got the feet, the lower leg, the upper leg, the upper leg. So that's three. Three to six, six is twelve. So you got twelve carrying around this one tabernacle here, as did the children of Israel, or the twelve tribes of Egypt, actually carry this this physical tabernacle around in the wilderness. When the cloud said stop, uh, go, they would go. When the cloud stopped overhead, they would stop. And the cloud is the same man. It says, go, sends messages, you go. Wherever you want to stop, that's where you, you send messages from your cloud, and that's where you stop. Now, we got the uh, children of Israel's migration. And so many things conform to this pattern, or we won't get into all of them, but the children of Israel's migration being core around about holy places in the home. Most holy place for Egypt, wilderness, Canaan land. Egypt and the wilderness is divided by this Red Sea, like an into a door. The wilderness and the Canaan land divided by the River Jordan, like a, like that sixth depth, you see. Um, both of which had to be opened up miraculously by uh, Yahweh himself, using Moses, and then using Joshua, which is very important. No J, no Jesus, Joshua, using Joshua. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, Joshua 24th chapter, he revealed himself. But now, with this four points of blood, we got, we're talking about this Passover, and should we keep it? Now, get um, Exodus, what is it, 12 and 1? Scriptures to Exodus 12 and 1. This is Exodus 12 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. 
Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. It, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it upon the two side posts and upon the upper door posts of the houses where they shall eat it. And they shall eat of the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden, nor at all with water, but roast it with fire, his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. Ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and, it sh and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire, and thus ye shall eat it, with your loins girded and your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. Ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am Yahweh. Okay, so now that's Yahweh's Passover. Um, they, they had to perform that. They had to uh, perform this. Uh, Yahweh told them to do it. Strike the door, you know, with the four points of blood. We just, we just talked about four points of blood here and four points of blood here. And Yahweh told them, this is to escape this, this land of Egypt, uh, land of chaos, of many gods, darkness and confusion. How to get out of this? You know, they were promised back up to Abraham, his seed would go down to a land where they know not of and be evilly entreated, you see. Or bitterly entreated, you know, or given the acid treatment. And when they cried out, he said he would be his heard their cry and come down and deliver them. And he poured out those plagues, you see, ten devastating plagues. Uh, and when he and when it came for time to de deliver them, he told them, to, you know, put this uh, perform this ritual here, or put this uh, four points of blood, make these four points of blood, uh, and then they would have to do it, do that. If they didn't. They would be destroyed. Even if they were Israelites down here, if they didn't do this, they would be destroyed. But as long as they did it, or as long as they obeyed Yahweh's voice, then he would bring them out, or he would pass over them. See, that's the start, that's the start of the Passover, you see. And, uh, and it's a lot to that. So, uh, um, now, he, now the death angel passed over their houses, you see, when he saw this blood on the inside of their doors. Also, there is a principle of passing over, you see, when they uh, uh, come through this Red Sea, you see, and into this uh, land of, uh, of this wilderness. Uh, also, I, want you, I need you to get, uh, uh, let's see, I need you to get Luke 22 and 19, uh, Exodus, yeah, 22 and 19. This is Luke 22, 19. For this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until, until the kingdom of Yahweh it shall come. Continue? Yeah. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on this table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it is determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Okay. Now, we see, now Yahweh is not slack concerning this promise. He told Abraham what would happen 430 years before, and it happened on time. Now, the children of Israel were all, uh, came through the divided waters of the Red Sea and entered into the uh, wilderness. And this is where Yahweh uh, had Moses pitch this tabernacle. Now, that tabernacle is going to be, what can I say? It's going to be an example or a shadow of heavenly things. Now, that's what we read in Hebrews 8 and 5. 
so that this physical, these physical laws and this uh, keeping of the Passover, which they did for 1,500 years, they had to, they had to perform this. 1,500 years they did it until the Messiah came in. But but if they didn't do it down here, they would they would they would be killed or, or die off. And actually, as this first tabernacle weathered away, so is this first law gonna gonna uh, going to wither away or be taken away. Now they came when they came through the River Jordan and went into Canaan land. They built a new tabernacle or a new temple in this temple of Solomon's temple. That's what we're reading in uh, First, Cur First Chronicles 28 and 19. Did we get that? Yes, we did. You wanted to get Okay. That? No, that's good. So we this this temple here is built again threefold porch, oracle, and sanctuary. You see? And it typifies a new a new a new temple or a new body. This being this being a uh, type and shadow of the body of Elohim. Elohim the archetype the original pattern of the universe. Elohim is the pattern. So we're talking about a new body or a new covenant. This was the first covenant that was given to uh, Israel. Uh, or the first church or the first assembly. You see. Now go to Jeremiah 31 and 31. You see. Well we can find out that this oh, also let me bag up. Moses giving these tables of stone. He was given two tables of stone. Uh, two times. He went up into the mountain three times. Second, third time he received this second, the first and second table of stone. The first set he threw down and broke. That's going to be compared to the first law that's being broken by the children of Israel. Or the first covenant that's going to be taken out of the way. And he's going to establish a second covenant. So now get Jeremiah 31 and 31. This is Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh, that I will put my law, my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts, and will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. So this is where, now look, he said he's going to it's going to be a new covenant established, with it, not, not, you know, like the covenant he gave back here, but it's going to be written without can pen and ink, and it's going to be inside them. So with this pass over here that, 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 that Yahshua Messiah ate with his disciples, you know, that and broke the bread and uh, drank from the cup, that's going to, he's going to make an end or bring an end to this Passover meal. It was a memorial for him. He speaks loud and clear when he says, take eat to the and, and, and this, by this you do remember me all, you know, until I, look, that's the same one with the unity of the spirit. We know that this is the same Elohim back here that's come down in the flesh, known in pure spirit here, without shape and form, in part taking on shape and form as the three, uh, as Elohim, the archetype of original pattern universe, is seen in visions and revelations, and can, he can come down into another state here or a concrete manifestation and walk around with his disciples. Again, this, this tabernacle here uh, and 12 disciples walking around him. Yes, just, you have this tabernacle here reflecting that with the 12 tribes of Israel. So he's the one who's saying here, do this in the remembrance of me. And then he repeats the same words because he has to be fulfilling. Well, you know, it's, 
did long. Luke first uh, John five thirty nine, Luke twenty four, and uh, those fulfillment scriptures because this is all about these scriptures are about Yah Yahshua the Messiah, and they uh, testify to his death, burial, and resurrection. You see, so we can't forget that they they were fed manna or bread down here back in this wilderness and they did eat but that manna they died from it I mean they all died off we're talking about a true bread or a true uh, Passover now which are the words of the Messiah but uh, which we have to eat spiritually and psychologically well should you eat the Passover? no but he is your Passover the words his words you see, are the spirit and life. Uh, he is the bread of life. So, uh, again, I call the scripture. John 5, 39. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, And these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Right, so you see, uh, that's that's all he can do. That's that's the the meat. His meat is the will of the Father. He has to do what the Father tells him to do. And uh, so, should you keep the Passover? <laughs> no, he is your Passover. And I say hallelujah. Speaker this afternoon is Dr. May Cohen. speaker you should have got a lot out of that uh, he had to tell you about this tabernacle pattern because this tabernacle pattern is a type of shadow of the true pattern which is the creator himself and it does say in the scriptures uh, that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God when he told you that there were uh, take this off this is clean uh, that there are seven steps in this tabernacle pattern. And he went through those steps. Now, when we talk about uh, should we keep the Passover, just like the previous speaker said, no. Not literally so. See, and this tabernacle pattern, when you look at this particular uh, vessel, uh, the altar sin sacrifice, this is pointing up to Yahshua the Messiah. See, the whole thing actually is, you know, uh, but let's uh, go back and uh, review a few scriptures that he pulled. Let's start by uh, with Jeremiah 31 and 39. See, because when we read about uh, the Passover here in the land of Egypt prior to the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, see, we're reading about something that was literally given to the Jews and the Jews only, you see. And uh, somebody also did uh, Exodus, the 12th chapter. See, because uh, the Passover uh, in Christendom is properly is uh, pop popularly thought that the Passover was instituted with the Messiah when the Messiah sat down with his disciples. But technically, it was instituted here in Egypt. Okay, somebody get those scriptures. This is Jeremiah 31, 31. Uh -huh. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, uh -huh. not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand, Okay. to bring them out of the land of Egypt. He said, now I'm going to make, excuse me for cutting you off, but he said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, the 12 tribes of Israel. And it's not according to the covenant that he made with their fathers. Mm -hmm. Continue. 
32nd verse, not according to the covenant that they made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which okay. my covenant they break. Yes. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Uh -huh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, now, saith Yahweh. He said that it's a new covenant I'm going to make. But he said it's gonna be after those days. So after what days? We come down here to school and we find out that after those days is after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. After those days, read. Uh, 33rd verse, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. Uh -huh. I will put my law in their inward parts. And he said, now I'm going to put my law in their inward parts. See, it's going to be an inside job now. See, be, with the children of Israel, they had some 613 odd laws and ordinances that they were supposed to keep. And it was impossible for them to keep it. They were not able to keep it, see. But they all of those laws were outside of themselves, see. And they were natural, literal, physical people. And they were not able to keep those laws. That's why Yahshua Messiah had to come in, see. He had to come in and die the death of an outcast dog, see, because he came in to fulfill everything that was written in the Law of the Prophets. And just like uh, the previous speaker uh, pulled up the scripture, John 5, 39, where it says, ye search the scriptures, because then, then you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. See, all of the scriptures are testifying of him. And when he comes in and uh, he dies on the cross, and when he said, it is finished, he is not talking about his life. He's talking about everything that was written in the law and the prophets that he came to fulfill. It's all done or fulfilled. Okay, continue. Very third verse. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. Mm -hmm. I will put my law in their inward parts and yes. right in their hearts. See, he will... said that that law is no longer going to be on literal, physical tables of stone. See, because Christendom, they uh, normally only honor 12 of them. But there were 613, and you can go into your book and see that there were so many more. But they only honor the principal 12. You see what I'm saying? But he says it's no longer going to be written on uh, tables of stone, but it's going to be written in your inner parts, in your heart, and in your mind. Continue. I will write my law in their inward part and uh -huh. write in their hearts and yes. be their Elohim and they shall be that's my right. people. That's right. Okay, okay. That's, that's good. That's good there. Now, let's go back and pick up where the uh, Passover was instituted at. Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus 12 and 1. Uh -huh. and Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, yeah. This month shall be unto you the beginning of the month. And we can look at our uh, pictorial illustrations because this is a school. And in school, we have pictorial illustrations. So we can look at our pictorial illustration. We're reading about the Passover. And you can see a pictorial illustration of it right here on the Moses chart. Continue to read. Or the migratory chart, as some of us call it as well. Continue. Second verse. This shall this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Mm -hmm. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Right. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying. Yeah, now you'll find out, excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry to keep cutting you off, but you'll find out when he said this shall be the first month of the year to you. He's setting up time with the children of Israel. And you can read in the book. I don't know where it is, but if you want to pull it right quick, just so you know that it's there. See, the first month was April, or what they commonly call Abib. You see what I'm saying? Abib in Hebrew. And Assyrian is Nisan. So you'll say you'll see Abib. Sometimes you see Abib or Nisan. Abib is Hebrew. Nisan is Assyrian. That's when they were in captivity, but that's a whole nother story. Let's continue to read. That is coming from Exodus 13 and 4. Yes. This day shall come. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. Okay, so he said, This day came ye out in the month of Abib. And that corresponds to April. And if you look at it from a natural standpoint, isn't everything coming back to life in April? You see what I'm saying? You know, it's, it's, we don't have time to go into it, but April was the original beginning of the year. And it evolved through the changing of the calendar with Pope Gregory, or the Gregorian calendar that we're under now. That's why it's January. But we're not going to get into that right now. You can do a little research on that yourself. But the original calendar, according to where Yahweh set it up, is in April or Abia. And let's continue to read. Third verse, uh -huh. verse 12 and 3. Okay. Speak, unto, speak ye under all the congregation of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their father. Okay. A lamb for an house. Right. And if the household be too little for the lamb, mm -hmm. 
Let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Uh -huh. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a okay. lamb of the first year. So they had to take that lamb out, every man according to the household. All of, of all the children of Israel, they had to take that lamb out. And they said that lamb had to be without spot of blemish. So they had to examine that lamb to see that it had no spot of blemish. Continue reading. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a mm -hmm. male of the first year. Okay. You, shall take, <clears throat> you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Uh -huh. And you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole, the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Okay, now they had to take that lamb out. They took it out from the tent. They held it over to the 14th, four days. Now, why do you think there are so many animals, you know, there were several different types of animals they had to sacrifice on this altar. And you see they had four points of blood here, right? You know, just like they had to take this lamb out, you see what I'm saying? And they had to, uh, we're going to continue to read, but why do you think they had to take a lamb out? See, because it's pointing up to the true lamb, which is Yahshua Messiah. You'll read in the book, it says, John said, Behold, the lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then I think the revelation talks about the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, why do you think they would use the principle? Because, see, this is all principle, see, because Yahweh is spirit. You see, but we're looking at principles. Now, why would you think it's a lamb? Because a lamb will go to the slaughter, and it won't buck. It won't kick. It'd be like, you get ready to kill me. Okay. Oh, well. I mean, a lamb is not going to get upset with danger. It's just going to go along. And that's the same thing that Yahshua did. You see what I'm saying? Continue to read. Seventh verse. Uh -huh. And they shall take of the blood and strike it upon the two side posts and the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Okay, now they had to take the blood and they had to strike it upon the two side posts and the upper door posts of the door. You see what I'm saying? And then don't we read later where Yahshua say, I am the door? You see what I'm saying? And then we look over here and we see that he the door. He said he the door. And didn't they strike blood, strike the two side posts of the door? And the thorn, thorn uh, on his head, the upper door post, and they dipped it from a basin, okay? And they uh, struck it with his side. So you see, he is the door. See, it's pointing up to him. Okay, uh, drop down to, uh, I want to get the Passover menu, but I want to get before that, drop down to 12, 20, 20 to 22. Exodus 12, 20. This is Exodus 12 and 20. Uh -huh. You shall eat nothing leaven. Uh -huh. in, in all your habitation shall you eat unleavened bread. Right. Then Moses shall, shall then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, uh -huh. Draw out and take a lamb according to your families and right. kill the Passover. Uh -huh. And you shall take a bunch of his sop and dip it in that is in dip it in the blood that is in the basin See? and strike the lentil, the two side posts with Right, the, with so you the dip blood. the blood in the basin you struck it on the two side posts and the upper door posts. See, and they had to strike it just like they did with Yahshua Messiah when they struck those nails in his hands and feet. And they pushed that crown. They didn't sit it on there all nicely like, let me sit this. No, they, boom, they, they put it on his head. How? While that blood come dripping down. You see what I'm saying? They had to do it that way because just like it was read earlier in our scripture lesson, 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, chapter, that Yahshua is our Passover. See, it's pointing up to him. He is the true Passover, which this was a type of shadow of, see. It was a type of shadow. Somebody can get, um, is it Hebrews 85, a schoolmaster, is that it? That leads up to the Messiah, is that that scripture? This is a school, okay? If somebody can get that. Galatians 3 and 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster uh -huh. to bring us unto the Messiah. Okay, yeah, see, they, the law was our schoolmaster, see, to bring us up unto the Messiah, see, which is the reality. Okay, continue. That we might be justified by faith. Mm -hmm. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. See, after that faith has come, and that faith did come as of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, see. You see what I'm saying? That faith has come. We are no longer under a schoolmaster, right? 
That's what it says? That is correct. Okay, so now let's go back to um, Exodus, uh, and I want you to read uh, uh, Exodus 12 and 8. See, because you find that in, in the world, the, the two more po most popular religions is Christian Doom and Will Three, is Muslims, Christian Doom, and uh, the Catholics. You know, and you find Christian Doom, they try to keep, they call it the Lord's Supper. Sometimes sometime they call it the Last Supper. And with the Catholics, they call it the Holy Eucharist, where they say that the actual bread and the wine is turned miraculously into the actual body and blood of the Messiah. But if you look into your Bible, you won't find Holy Eucharist in the Bible at all. See, and the Lord's Supper is what they call the Lord's Supper is a mistranslation of what occurred when Yahshua Messiah sat down with the final Passover, the, uh, what they call the Last Supper, with his uh, disciples. But uh, go ahead and get that. What did I ask for? Okay. Exodus 12 and 8. Okay, yes. And they shall eat the flesh in, the, in that night, mm -hmm. with fire. Okay, so now you're finding out what the menu was of the Passover that was instituted with the children of Israel. Okay, continue. They shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire. So the flesh is that lamb, okay, that we just read about, okay, continue. Roast with fire, unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs so they shall eat it. They had the lamb, they had unleavened bread, which one of the feast days, the feast of unleavened bread, which they had to eat unleavened for seven days, and they couldn't have any leaven in their household. See, an unleavened is uh, pointing up to bread that has no yeast, or is not puffed up. And then Yahshua the Messiah say, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. You see what I'm saying? He humbled himself. He came all the way from pure spirit. See, he took on shape and form all the way down into a physical, literal body. He came all the way down to where we are. You see what I'm saying? So that bread had to be on level because his principles point up to something spiritual. You know, we can read Romans 1, 19 and 20 that the natural things point up to the spiritual things. Okay, continue to read. Ninth verse. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at mm -hmm. all with water. Yeah. But roast with fire mm -hmm. his head with his legs and yeah. the hardness thereof. Mm -hmm. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. Mm -hmm. And that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. Right. Okay. Shall... Okay, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. And you shall eat it with your loins girded, your mm -hmm. shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. See, so it wasn't just any kind of way. You see what I'm saying? And guess what? They ate it in their houses. See, now they have you a church, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, Christian Jew has cracker, crackers and grape juice. The, uh, the Holy Eucharist, the Catholics have wafers. It's, I don't know if it's wine or grape juice. It's one or the other, you know. And uh, the uh, Christians do it, I think, uh, first Sunday, from what I can recall, when I was in the church, first Sunday. And, uh, and the uh, Catholics do it, I think, every Mass, they do that. You see what I'm saying? But... It's, it's a gross mis-error, see, of the true Passover instituted here with the children of Israel and pointing up to our Passover, which is within us. You see what I'm saying? Which is Yahshua Messiah, see? Okay, um, so now they said that the menu was roasted lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. We talked a, bit, a little bit about that unleavened bread, see? Now, we talked about Yahshua Messiah being a true lamb. You see what I'm saying? And when they put him on this cross, they roasted him. Y'all know how, y'all seen on TV where they do the roast with Dean Martin and they be joking and talking about him and stuff like that. And that's what they did with Yahshua Messiah. They roasted him. They said, well, if you be the son of man, get down on that cross and save yourself. You know, and they, they just, you know, made mock mockery of him. You see what I'm saying? And then them bitter herbs, you know, when you when you come into a knowledge, a true knowledge and understanding of uh, your creator, at first it's bitter because it's nothing that you thought. It's nothing like what you thought. Somebody get the scripture in um, uh, Isaiah 53. I think it's uh, 53 and 2 where it says no form and no comeliness. See, because we the way that we thought about our creator is nothing like we thought that he would be. You see what I'm saying? And we want to know him. The first aim of our school is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. The world says that the Messiah came in to institute. 
You see what I'm saying? The book says, and we can, and, and uh, the uh, previous speaker pulled it a little bit, the book says that he came in to fulfill. And all while he's talking, his three and a half year ministry, he's talking about that he came in to do the will of his father. He came to fulfill everything that was written in the law of the prophets, you see. And you, you, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what they call the four gospels, that's just a biography of Yahshua Messiah during his three and a half year ministry. And they weren't even written when the Messiah was walking on the earth plane. They were not even written. But go ahead and get that. This is Isaiah 53 and 3. Uh -huh. he, was, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Okay, now this is Isaiah, and he's a, this is in the prophecy. So he's prophesying of the coming of Yahshua Messiah. Start that over again. Isaiah 53 and 3. Mm -hmm. He is despised and rejected of men. See, he's despised and rejected of men because it, it tells you, he said, that uh, uh, I come in my father's name and you receive me not. Let another come in his own name. You're going to receive that. And the whole world receives Jesus Christ. You know, and there's some people that might even receive the name Yahweh, but when it comes to that name Yahshua, won't nobody receive that. Continue. Third verse again. He was he is despised and rejected of men, uh -huh. a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. See, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Read. Really. And we have and we hid as it were our faces from him. Uh -huh. He was despised and and he, and we esteemed him not. Right. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That's right. See, because he came to fulfill everything that was written in the law of the prophets, fulfilling the sin of all of mankind, which began with Adam. You see what I'm saying? And that passed upon all mankind. We have three ages in the realm of time. We have the antediluvian age, which is before the flood, the present, uh, the post-diluvian, I'm sorry, yeah, ante before the flood, post-diluvian is after the flood, the present kingdom age. See, that's the age we in now. See, when Yahshua Messiah is walking on the uh, earth plane, he was in this age, the post-diluvian age. And when you read the things that he said, he was still under the law. This is before he had fulfilled the law and the prophecy. He was still under the law. And what we're reading is under the law still. Isaiah prophesizing of the coming of Yahshua Messiah. See what it says in here? That's in of uh, uh, that old covenant or that old way of worship. See, the end of all that. Okay, continue reading. Fourth verse, for he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we have seen him stricken, right. smitten of Yahweh and afflicted. Uh -huh. But he was wounded for our transgressions. That's right. He was and wounded he, for our transgression, read. And he was bruised for our iniquities. That's right. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh -huh. And with his stripes were we are healed. Those forty stripes. With his stripes we are healed. Well, how are we healed? We healed psychologically and spiritually. See, he he came in so that we can pass over from death or these old works, you see what I'm saying? Unto life, see. Spiritual sacrifices, the law of the spirit, the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah on earth, see. It's an inner working. You see what I'm saying? Somebody get 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Mm -hmm. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Right. See, your body, see now, that's Paul, right? Yes. Isn't that Paul right in there now? When he's writing that, see, he's in this age now. The same age that we're in. See, we're at the end of this last age of time, present kingdom age. He was in the beginning of it, see? And he's telling you, see, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So he's telling you what the temple is now. You see what I'm saying? Can, uh, read that again from the beginning. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Uh -huh. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? See, he's you telling have... you, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you now. See, it's in you. It's not those outer works, see. It's not all of those outer works that the children of Israel have given, those 613 odd laws and ordinances, which they weren't able to keep, and they failed miserably in trying to keep them. They were not able to. That's why he had to come here, see. He had to come to fulfill all that. See, continue. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you uh -huh. which you have of Yahweh and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price. So what is that price you're bought with? See, our Passover that was sacrificed for us. See, you're bought with the price through the precious blood of Yahshua the Messiah. That's the price. He paid the price. You see what I'm saying? So we can have life and have it more abundantly. See, the New Testament is written in your heart or in your mind. See, 
The New Testament is not what they call in that Bible. You see what I'm saying? It's that new covenant that he was talking about in Jeremiah 31, 31. Continue to read. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit which are his. See, so now you glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit which are his, see? Because he came in to fulfill all those things. See, because we weren't able to keep them, but he did. It tells you somewhere uh, in the book where it says that everything that he fulfilled or that he did while he was in the, in, the, in the earth plane for those 33 years, if it was written in a book, the whole world would not be able to contain it. See, he was, he was busy. Just like the children of Israel, when they, when they uh, took of this Passover, they had to be prepared. They had to have their loins girded. They had to have their shoes on their feet, ready to move. See, and he came in and he was showing up moving. You see what I'm saying? They had to have the shoes on their feet. They had to have the staff in their hand. They had to move. You see what I'm saying? Because right after that is when they left uh, Egypt and crossed over that Red Sea and went to the wilderness. You see what I'm saying? So this was the, this, this was the Passover for them and a type of shadow because down here in Egypt, they were under strict bondage down here. You see what I'm saying? So we can look at the principles. See, they passed from a state of death. And you can look at, see how it's all dark down here? You see what I'm saying? So they passed from death unto life. You see what I'm saying? Didn't they sing a song of victory? When they crossed over that Red Sea, they sung a song of victory. You see what I'm saying? Okay, uh, I heard the bell. So let's uh, go back and get uh, Matthew uh, 26. Start at uh, 26 and 26. And then I want, after you do that, I want you to read uh, in the textbook, because this is school, we do have a textbook in this school. I want you to read in the textbook, volume two, page 30, but I want you to read that after you read uh, Matthew 26 and 26. This is Matthew 26 and 26. Mm -hmm. And as they were eating, Yahshua yes. took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples right. and said, mm -hmm. take, eat, this is my body. Mm -hmm. Now see how see how a carnal man or man that don't have no understanding could go in there and say, take, eat. This is my body, thinking they're talking about the bread, but he's talking about himself. See, this is my body. Read. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. Mm -hmm. For this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. Now remember, we're talking about uh, uh, where we are in time, and he's still here. See, that New Testament has not come into effect yet. You see what I'm saying? But he's telling you that this is my blood of the New Testament. See, it's a type and a shadow. Okay, read down to 29. Did you get to 29 yet? The 29th verse. Okay. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day which I drink it new with you in my Father's That's kingdom. That's right. New of you in my Father's kingdom. See, where you're supping with him. You have constant communication with him in your heart and mind. See, he's in you. He's one with you. You see what I'm saying? So, okay, let's go on because we got a few minutes. Let's get uh, the textbook, volume 2, page 30. This is volume two, uh, prophetic birth and mission of John the Baptist and Yahshua the Messiah. Yes, yeah. where are those asterisks are, read that yes. part. I got it, second, okay. second full paragraph. Mm -hmm. Yahshua, therefore, knowing that he was the Passover or the sacrificial lamb, See. commanded his disciples in a figure to eat of his body That's and right. drink of his blood by right. taking bread and breaking it, mm -hmm. prefiguring his broken body. That's right. And spent carcass of the sacrificial lamb in Egypt right. and, and, taking, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. and, and taking up the cup he, he spilled his blood in a figure yes. saying drink ye all of it right. for as for as it was necessary for every Israelite to eat the sacrificial lamb down in Egypt in order to be saved mm -hmm. out of the dark chaotic Egypt it, it was necessary for the disciples to figuratively eat all of Yahweh's that body right. and blood to attain unto eternal life mm -hmm. and be saved from eternal damnation and hell. Exactly. But yes. the act, but the actual eating of the bread and drinking of the cup meant absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. It was the words which Yahshua spoke, right. which was spirit and life. Right. He said the words about flesh profit of nothing. Right. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let's get the last one in the textbook, page thirty-two, where those asterisks are. And then I'll take my seat because I know the bells. This is page 32, mm -hmm. second volume. Paul understood that it, in preaching the Messiah and receiving him in one's heart and mind mm -hmm. that 
that was the true communion of the body of the Messiah. That's right, that's the true communion, which what the uh, uh, people did was a type and a shadow, see, of the true communion. Right, continue. For the words which were spoken by one possessed with the possessed of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. are spirit and life. The foolishness of preaching, read. Really. Yahshua had told the Jews that verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Mm -hmm. That's John 6, 53. Okay. And many of his disciples which heard this said, this is a hard saying, who can right. bear it? But Yahshua was straightening out their carnal thinking by telling them, That's it right. is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh right. profiteth nothing. Yeah, because see, when he said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no, you know, and a lot of people are like, Ugh, we can't do that because they think cannibalism. See, but he wasn't talking about that. See, he was talking about spiritual things. He always was talking yeah. spiritual. That's why a lot of things that he said, it was hard to be understood. Right. See, because he was talking spiritual. He was always talking spiritual. But he had to use natural things to get the point over. Right. See, but at Pentecost, he brought it back to their remembrance and they understood then. You see what I'm saying? Remember they thought they were drunk, they were so happy because they were like, I get it now, I get it. You see what I'm saying? And that's what happened to us coming up here in the school. We got it now, we got it. You see what I'm saying? Is that it? Okay. All right. So hopefully you got something out of that. And please go to our uh, website, www.yashotherock.org for more information about our classes. Thank you for your time. That's how they did these sacrifices. See, they burned them with fire. They were sacrifices. 
I now go to, and see that's what, you know, when Yahshua started walking around, he, he, his disciples said, did not he, our, his words burn within us? Mm -hmm. See, his words were like a consuming fire. Mm -hmm. See, so you, if, if his words were like a consuming fire, you're eating roasted lamb. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. I don't know if you understood what we said. You, you're eating roasted, you're eating a cooked meal. Yeah. And it is not raw. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I don't know. What it, uh, go to Matthew. Get it, get it, it's, I'm going to Matthew. Okay, good. Go to Matthew. Let me know when you get it. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. I don't want to waste time. All right. So, when he, when, when Yahshua says, place, listen, listen. We, we, we concentrate on one feast day, which is a feast of, which is a Passover. Now, the vessels mentioned to you, they said Passover and unleavened bread. These feast days are closely uh, 14, 15, and 16. So you're talking about the Passover, unleavened bread, and we don't want to forget the Feast of First Fruits. See, all of them typifies Passover, death, unleavened bread, of burial, and the Feast of First Fruits is the resurrection. See, it accomplished, he fulfilled all of those things. All right, go ahead. This is Exodus, uh, Exodus. This is Matthew 24 and 3. Mm -hmm. 24 and 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of Yahweh descended from heaven and came down and rolled the stone back from the door and sat upon it. Mm -hmm. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was as white as snow. Mm -hmm. For the fear of him, the keepers did shake and were became as dead men. See, look, this is why when they went through this Red Sea, see, this is a, it was a, they filled as dead men. Who did? Not the children of Israel, but see who? The Egyptians, see, just like they, just like they were like dead men, so we go right over here, and we look at this uh, tomb right here, see, and as he's resurrected out of the tomb, as they were resurrected out of the Red Sea, see, through the Red Sea, you got these two men there as what? Dead men. See, go ahead. And the fear of him of the keepers did shake, and they, they became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, mm -hmm. Fear ye not, for I know ye see God. You got an angel right here? You got an angel right here. See, go ahead. For, ye, for I know that you seek Yahshua, which was crucified. Mm. He is not here, mm. for he is risen. See, just like this, that's like this. When they, they sought, listen, they sought the children of Israel. You think they didn't? They did. When they were getting ready to get out of there, what the heck have we done? Mm. So they sought them. <laughs> they wanted to bring them back down there. Go ahead. For he is not here, for he is risen, mm. as he had said. Mm. Come, see the place where the where the Messiah lay, mm. and go quickly from the sepulchre. And they and they departed quickly from the sepulchre. I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong. And they go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. See, and the, yeah, so say when he resurrected from the dead, he didn't resurrect a physical body. See, he resurrected a spiritual body. See, and when they went to look for him, he wasn't there. See, you cannot create him. See, he's the creator. For us, as for, for someone to think that, I don't want to get carried off, because maybe may we get carried off a little bit later. <laughs> All right, so that's, so that's the Passover. I'm left with, you know, they were looking for him, it was, he was gone. And after that, see, the children of Israel, they ate that Passover, they went through the Red Sea, like the Joseph and the tomb, and they came up, they resurrected, it was out here in the wilderness. It was out there in the wilderness of the children of Israel. See, as the vessels have said, see, they received this Ten Commandment law. See, this law, that they received, and listen, it was the Jews and the Jews only that received this law. So we can't even get that straight. See, we want to make ourselves a part of this. See, but it wasn't given to us. It was given to the Jews and to the Jews only. See, and, and this covenant came out of effect. See, it had to be a show of blood. Did you know that? It had to be a show of blood. So this means this, that look, when they, when they, they spring, give me a word, I don't know where it's at, but that's the vessel say this is a school. See, and the blood was sprinkled upon them. See, you got that? But when you get it, let me know. See, because that first covenant, see, was that, see, that first covenant was done with blood. See, just as, so Yahshua he has no choice but to say. See, to look, take this cup, see, for you, and then also to see, this is so messed up. Listen, they couldn't even eat blood. See, we got to get that to. See, beyond that in uh, 17 and 10, Leviticus. All right, you got this. Is, this is Exodus 24 and 6. Mm -hmm. This is after the law was spoken. And he took half of the blood and put it in the basins, and half of the blood, and he sprinkled it on the altar. Mm -hmm. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that 
All that Yahweh said we will do and be obedient. Now, I know what I'm talking about. Listen to this. We're saying you got to. Don't think that we don't. See, listen. This blood, we said, yes. Four points of blood on this door. I'm talking about this. That's like to the, the Passover. Like he is that Passover. The four points of blood here. See, on that cross. See, but also he's the one. See, that mentioned there was blood in the cup. And it's like the New Testament. He's the one that said that. Not us. See, he's the one that said that. So, see, if he said that, we got we to gotta see why he's saying that. See, all right, go ahead. And they ate first, and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, and mm -hmm. he said, Behold the blood of the covenant which Yahweh had made with you concerning all these words. All right, see, the blood of the covenant. Now go to Jeremiah 31, 31. See, and then see, once we have done this, then we can go back to that table. See, and see them eating that, eating that Passover. See, I mean, it's, it's so much in this. It, it can't be, listen, even, and even where they were sitting, I've heard this, even where the, the place we're going to, we need a table. Here's the table right here. See, even when he was sitting at this table, see, Judas had to be sitting where he had to be sitting, Peter had to be sitting, where everybody had to be sitting in a certain location. And even the scriptures testify to that. See, we got to get that too. See, I think that Psalms the, I don't know, 41 or 42, something like that. This is Leviticus 17 and 10. Go ahead. And, who, and whatsoever man there be in the house of Israel, or a stranger that sojourn among you, mm. that eateth any manner of blood. But well, wait a minute. This is in the law. So you can't even eat no blood. So what are you telling me that I got to eat the blood? That's why. So you want to know, yeah, it sounds like calendars. That's why they looked at him and said, see, not only are you sound like you want me to eat like calendarism, first of all, that's against our law. We can't even eat blood. And you want me to eat you up, see? And you're full of blood. I can't do that. See? All right, uh, you got that? Okay, I'm going to finish this up. And, I will, and I will set my face against that so that eateth blood and will cut him off from among the people. Mm, they will cut off from... Oh, it's funny, right? Go ahead. Uh, that's it with that. All right. What did I ask for? Uh, you want Psalms? Yeah, it's 40, 41, 42, whatever. Huh? 41 and 9? 41 and 9, that's it. Okay, yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trust, which did ye eat of my bread, had lifted up his heel. Now, we see, we're going to lay on the ground, we're going to go back into the Passover. Then you pick, we were, I guess we could do Matthews, I don't know, yeah, Matthews. So he said, my own familiar friend. Huh? See that? And see, he was friends with you. He, he walked around with him, see, and betrayed him. And I asked this, ask this question, nah, I didn't ask it to nobody in here, but I asked this question. Well, wait a minute. You gotta, you gotta tell me, you know, please, if there's a betrayal, I wanna see a betrayal. I, so I see it with Judas, but I wanna see a betrayal with the Passover. Because when I'm reading it, I'm like, I don't see it. But then you actually say, look, you can go. See, this is the just. Yes, listen. He told him, in this Passover, with this seat, he, he's gonna give it, let you go. So Pharaoh said, what? Exactly, <laughs> that's it. He said, what, I'm gonna do it? Well, yeah, I'm gonna do it and I'm not gonna do it. So he betrayed them. Okay. See, he right. told them, you can go. Go, you can go. <laughs> and bless me too. Right. See? <laughs> yeah, go ahead on. And then they're like, what the heck have we done? And they went, what? Chasing, chasing that flesh. See, that's like going and saying, anyway, yeah, I'm going to say something else. That's like, let's say they went back. They just, you know, they chased the flesh. That's a betrayal. See, so I understand now where that's at. So that answers my question, see. And then I said it was your question, but it was my question. Go ahead. This is Matthew 26, 14. Mm -hmm. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, what will you give me, well, uh, I, and I will deliver him unto you. Mm -hmm. And they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. Mm -hmm. See, well, that's what see, he thinks. See, and yeah, it's going to fit. How do I know it's going to fit? Because Judas is playing the same role as Pharaoh was playing. Mm -hmm. Lucifer incarnated in him. So it's got to what? It's got to fit. Mm -hmm. right. See, we're not just making this up just so it sounds good. See, and everything we're doing, see, we can prove it by the scripture. See, that's why if you read, you may not get it, see, but you, you, if you read uh, Psalms, yeah, what is it, 20, 21, 22, one of them, I think it's 22. If you read Psalms 22, man, it even talks about the nails in his hand. Let's get that. See, 
I mean, everything that he did, he was, as the last professor said, he was fulfilling. See? Let's get that. Then we can get a bit more into this. But I want to just, some of the things that we don't often say, see, but they're in the, they're in the scriptures. It's because we don't say it, see, but they're in there. See? That's it. I, I just don't know where it's at. Uh, 22. 22 and 6. Okay. But I am a worm, and no man reproached, and no man a reproach of men and despise of the people. And they all saw me and laughed at me to scorn. See, they did him. You ought to read this, man. This is deep. Everything that happened to him, <laughs> read it. And they shoot out the lip, they shake, they shake the head, saying, He trusted it on Yahweh. Didn't they say that to him? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, are we making this up? Didn't they? Do we gotta get it? They said that to him when he was on the cross. Yeah. See, go ahead. He trusted on Yahweh that he would deliver him and let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Yeah, you go ahead. But thou art but thou art he that took me out of the womb and didst make me whole upon my mother's breast. Let me drop to the sixteenth Go verse. Ahead. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. For the dogs have compassed about compassed me. Mm. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. That's right. They okay. pierced my hands and my feet. See, listen, they pierced his hand and you can see it right here. They pierced us. They had no choice but to do it. I and mean, even though the scripture says cursing hands of hang on, they, they, they had to do it. See, they had the I can't help it. See, just like if the things you do, you got the I can't help it too. Because believe it or not, it was it was instituted way back then that the things you were gonna do. Think about it. Go ahead. I may tell all my bones they look and stare upon me. Mm -hmm. They part my garments among them. Wait a minute. Did they or did they not part this garment? So see, they really are, you know, wow, that's some power. That is really some power. To, 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 we ain't even gonna say how many years that was, but it wasn't yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> know that much, go ahead. It is, it was, it still don't matter. Cast lots upon my vesture, but be not thou far from me, O Yahweh. Mm -hmm. O my strength, hate, haste me to help me. Mm -hmm. Deliver my soul from the sword, mm -hmm. my darling from the power of the dog. Mm -hmm. Save me from the lion's mouth, yeah. for they heard, for they have heard me from the horns of the unicorn. That's, that's I declare thy name to mm -hmm. my brother. And that's what he did, folks. He declared that name. Right. See, that's all he, he wasn't, he was declaring his father's name. That's how we know he was the one. That's how we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Because we're able to go back, see, into the law, and back into the prophets and see that. See, that's why when, listen, when Abraham, see, we don't have to get this, but this is, we understand that when Abraham, see, when those angels appeared to Abraham, see, what did they, they prepared a meal. See, and, and this Abraham said, told, it to, uh, told Sarah, you know, Go, get, a, get a kid ready or whatever. I'm, I'm, I know I'm, screwed. I'm messing this up. But give me that. Because somebody's going to say you ain't going to the law of the property. Because <laughs> we, no, we ain't making that up. See? But the story's already written. So all we're doing is just, we're not trying to look good. We're just taking information that's already there. See? And who are we talking about? Not ourselves. See? We're talking about the Yahshua the Messiah. Yea, rose from the dead. Let him all have all the honor and all the glory. See? This is Genesis 18 and 1. And Yahweh okay. appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre and sat in the tent door mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And he lifted his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, mm -hmm. and which saw, which saw them. And he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, I want to keep going. Okay. 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 And, and he said, If my master, if I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee for thy servant. Let a little water, I pray thee, be Yeah, fast. pass not away. Go ahead. Be fish. Six mm -hmm. verses. Six verses. Six verses. Six verses. And Abraham hastened unto the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal needed and make cakes upon the hearth. Mm -hmm. and, and Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a calf. Why is he good. doing this? See, he's got the IK up too. He don't even know why he's doing this. See? This <laughs> is. The son. I mean, continue. Yeah. Continue. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf that he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by the under the tree. That's, that's good enough. But you see that? Now who does that? Who can set up something like that? And show it through the law and the prophet and make people do what he wants to do when he comes on the scene and fulfill it. 
I, I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed, see? And I have every right to be amazed, see? Now let's go back to the Passover, see? They read to you Isaiah the 53rd chapter, see? About how he was that, that sacrifice, see? Give me that, and then we're gonna go to Matthew, see? All right. Isaiah 53, yeah. See, and because we got you, she, she talked about John 1, 29. She said, Behold, when Yahshua came to John the Baptist, behold, the Lamb of Yahweh. See, we're trying to take away the sins of the world. She talked about, they talked about 13 and 8. I said, whatever, I think it's 13 and 8. See, he talked about that Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. See, now this Lamb here slain from the foundation of the world. See, does you know what he had to be slain with down here? See, for us. Now, see, the angels. See, they said, look, we are what? See, they were saved. See, and they found salvation. And what? From this lamb. Yes. Wait a minute. From this lamb. Not from this. See, but from this lamb. Saved from the foundation of the world. They ate of that lamb. See, if they got it, do it, so do you. See, so don't come telling me Whatever. Go ahead. Isaiah 53 and 7. Go ahead. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Mm. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb. Mm. So he opened not his mouth. And he opened not his mouth. He didn't. Go ahead. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? We got time for that. We can't just sit That's what he was done. He was taken from prison to pillar of the post. That's what he was doing. And he had to be done like that. So just like Joseph was kept. Everything is talking about the Asher Messiah. Just like it should be right here now. Go ahead. For he was cut off from the land of the living, mm. and for the and for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Mm. He was made he made his grave with the wicked. That, that, see, that's and, good. See, is that what you guys had enough pressure? Wait, well, uh, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. That's right. See, couldn't be no deceit in his mouth. See, they had to bring up false accusations. Mm -hmm. See, would imagine if you were in court yeah. and you was on trial and somebody lied. I think that happens a lot now. <laughs> then 20 years later, whoop, we made a mistake. You're free to go. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm suing you. <laughs> yeah, back in Chinese. But you, you see what I'm saying? They had to bring up what? False accusation. They had to, because see, he said he was. See, Yahweh manifested in the flesh. See, and the son. See, and they said, no, if you say that, you're wrong. And that's what they, I got you now. Because I, I know your father. I'm not trying to get carried away, because I know your father. Your father is Joseph. See, they didn't know who this was. See, they didn't know that this was Yahweh manifested in the physical body. See, and listen, that was a special comparison that was placed. Now, give me Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. We talk about this, talk about this, this Passover. See, and how he had to be, how he, God, oh, there's so much, folks. You won't even, listen, he ate his Passover. See, he, he washed, he washed disciples' feet, just like Moses had to wash them at the, at the, at the tabernacle. See, it's like, their, their feet had to be washed. And, and for him to say, you don't know what I'm doing right now? See, you know what he did? You know what they didn't know? They didn't know that it pointed up to the Spirit. Yes, that's right. See, yes. and people still don't know it. They read the books of Paul. They still don't know it. Hard to understand. See, hard to understand. So he washes, he washes some disciples' feet. And see, then he, just, then he does something else. See, then he goes into a garden. Why are you going to go into a garden? Oh, who does that? He goes into a garden. Why are you going to go into the garden and be betrayed? Yeah, I haven't forgot what I was talking about, the betrayed. Why are you going to go in the garden and be betrayed? See, why? Because in the garden. See, there's a meal right here. Where's the garden? See, I don't know. In the, in the garden, there's a meal right here. And what's going to happen? See, there's going to be betrayal up there. See, look, it's going to be a, it's a, a physical law that was given. Don't eat. Don't touch. See, as it said in Colossians, the, the second chapter, don't eat. Don't touch. See, that's a physical law. See, and then what? And Eve what? And she ate. And Adam, he ate. See, then everything died. See, he willingly died for his bride. They're like Josh Messiah, see? He willingly died on that cross for what? For his bride. See? And that's it. That was a physical, listen, that was a physical law. That was a physical piece of fruit. That was a physical thing that Eve and Adam ate. See? See, we do, see, we know what we're talking about, see? Now, if I can just go back to Matthews. 
And let's let's get it. Go Matthew 26 and 1. I'm ready. Go it came ahead. to pass when Yahshua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, mm -hmm. and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And the assembly together, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people, unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. Mm -hmm. And they consulted that they might take Yahshua by subtility and kill him. Mm -hmm. And it was not on time. Uh, you want me to keep dropping? No, you need to drop. You got to cut it off. Okay, here we go. Uh, 21st verse. And as they eat, and as they did eat, he okay. said, Ver huh? Wait one second. Um, 21st. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Mm -hmm. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them, and they said unto him, Master, is it I? Mm -hmm. And he answered and said, He that dipped his hand with me in the dish. See? See, I told you he read his son. He had to be sitting where he had to be sitting at. See, at the place at that table. See, go ahead. Okay, and, and he, the, he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. Mm -hmm. For the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man okay. is betrayed. All right, now, okay. in the cup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Then this is the 27th verse. Okay. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the for many for the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, I will not drink. All right. Now see, listen, that didn't mean nothing. Give me Hebrews the ninth chapter, uh, Hebrews the tenth chapter. I don't know where that. It talks about it stood only in meats and drinks. See, this law stood only in meats and drinks. See, and it could not make him that did it perfect as pertaining to his consciousness. See, go ahead. Nine ten chapter. Okay, go ahead. Nine, nine and what? Nine. Nine, nine and ten. Go ahead. This is nine and ten. Mm. Which only which with Hebrews nine and ten, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Mm. But the Messiah being a high priest of good things to come. Mm. By a greater and more see, perfect it tabernacle. only see until the time of reformation, mm. until the time of change. See, that's why Jeremiah 31, 31 says, Behold, the day is coming, y'all, now we're making a new covenant. Not like the one right here, wrote on the table of stone, but if we wrote in the hearts and minds of men. All you got to do is look right here. Second, second Corinthians 5, 17, give me that. See, and also give me uh, uh, Romans 14 and 17. See. This is Romans 14 and 17. 17. Go ahead. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not, is, no, I don't like this one. You don't like that one? No, 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 because it's the holy name. Oh, okay. You <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't like that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Go ahead. Okay. This is Romans 14, 17, coming out of the King James. Or for the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, but See, righteousness, listen, peace, and joy. The kingdom joy. is not meat. Wait a minute. At this table where they eat meat and drink, eat him, eat him. That's still flesh. <laughs> Go ahead. For well, the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink, but mm -hmm. righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. See, so we know we're talking. It's not that, see. And see, when we say, eat, take, eat of this. And see, Doc, we, we used to, when we came, when we first in class, came in class, we didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't understood, we didn't understand what the difference between this and that. That's right. You know, and when I, when I heard that, I, I was like, wait, what are you talking about? He said, take this is what? This is my body. See? This. He, see? Not that. Right. See? So they know the difference between this and that. That's right. See? Now that, they, they, yeah. As stupid as that sound, that's as stupid as they was. Because they didn't know the difference between this and that. And people still don't know the difference between this and that. See? Now, as we said, that, okay, give me five. Uh, Let's cut it up. Give me, uh, we, we got it, then this, see they laid a, the found, uh, foundation, they laid a framework, they talked about the, the cup, they talked about the sacrifice, see they talked about the, and, and, and listen, folks, when you're reading that and you begin to read it, and they talked about, they, they passed the cup, they talked about the bread, the sop, I, then I got a job for you. Read when he took, now listen, took the physical lamb at one of those tables. Hmm? 
Have you, you, have to go, you would have to go back to 26, 26 and as they were eating, uh -huh. Yahshua took bread, took bread and blessed it uh -huh. and break it uh -huh. and gave it to his disciples and said, take okay. it. Right, for first of all, you ain't gonna find it. They said as they were eating. What were they eating? Yeah, exactly. It does not say they were eating the lamb. Right. See? Yeah, they were eating. See, they were eating lamb. See, but what I'm trying to get you to see, the true lamb is Joshua the Messiah. Right. See, not a physical lamb. Now, let's, let's prove that. Give me uh, John 1. Well, first of all, you can't make a body. Like, give me, uh, well, you know you can't do that, but give me uh, John 1 and, um, 1 and 3 or whatever, where it says, you know, first of all, it's 14 verse that he was manifested in the flesh. Okay, I'll go back. Okay, go ahead. So the, okay, let me start with the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh, the same in the beginning. Now, now let me, Yahweh. hold on one second. When I said about, you can't read about the lamb, I just want you to see that, at least be conscious of the fact that it don't say lamb. You know, you could read it all day, and yeah, they said they were eating, but it just doesn't say physical lamb. I know they were eating, because we can go back here and do it. If they were really going back, they would understand what the menu truly was. That's right, absolutely. But they're not. Now mm -hmm. go here. This is John 1 and 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life is that, was... Is that the first verse? That's the, no, that's the third verse. Give me the first verse. First verse is, in the beginning was the Word, mm -hmm. and the Word was with Yahweh, mm -hmm. and the Word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The same in the beginning with Yahweh. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him, mm -hmm. and without him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. In him was life, and the life was... Uh, now go down to the 14th verse. 14th verse, mm -hmm. and the word was made flesh mm -hmm. and dwelt among us, That's right. and we beheld his glory. See, now glory. see, you can't make that. See, he made himself. Mm -hmm. See, that's why he had to put that seed in the woman. Mm -hmm. See, it, he, he didn't even rely on Mary and Joseph. Mm -hmm. See, it was a special repair scene. Now, you think you're so special, but we think we're so special. We're going to take a piece of bread and say hocus pocus and turn it into that. Give me John the sixth chapter where Dwayne talks about. Start at 663. See? Start at 663. This is John 6 and 6. See, and also give me 1 Corinthians the 11th chapter. See, it talks about 11, about 11 and 19, somewhere over there. Go ahead. Uh, John 663. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh prophet. No. See, you so listen. If, if this flesh, physical flesh, that's why he had to take it off. Because it prophet what? Nothing. Except what it was meant for. It was prepared sacrifice. But see, he, he had to be, they had to, he forced them to put him on that cross, really. See? Go ahead. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. But there are some of you that believe not. Mm -hmm. For Yahshua knew from the beginning who would believe not mm -hmm. and, would, and should betray him. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, that's good. So the sickness, where it said, wait a minute, well, in that, in that same thing, you don't have to get it, but I want you to get where it said, where will you go? See? Oh, that's where you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, like 70, 60, yeah, yeah, 60, 60, 67. 67. And, and from that time, his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Mm -hmm. Then Yahshua, then, Yash, then said Yahshua unto the twelve, Will you also go away? See, we didn't even get where why this is going on. We right. kind, of, kind of cut that up a little bit too much. But the, the reason he said that to him because they told him to eat of his flesh mm -hmm. and to eat of his blood. Right. See, and then he said they all walked away. As last verse said, they all looked, no, that's too hard for me. I'm not doing that. And they did what they walked away. Go ahead.